Hello, everyone. Uh, we are back with yet another episode of Gentle Warriors. I'm your host, Dona Mohapatra, and I am a fellow at Caregiver Sathi. I would like to welcome our guest for today's episode, uh, Dr. Priya Mehta, who will be sharing her caregiving experience with us. Uh, hi, Priya. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, so, Priya, would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, of course. So, first of all, uh, I am thankful to you for giving me this opportunity So to share my views on the caregiving and how is the journey and what is the important role the caregivers play in the journey of the cancer patient. So, talking about me, uh, as you had already mentioned my name, so I am Priya and uh, basically I am working in medical affairs in Zytus Life Sciences. So, again there, I am working uh, more of in the oncology sector. And uh, my caregiver journey is though not a professional one. Uh, I had experience of caregiving for my grandmother who got suffered with a breast cancer and for her we had taken care of thoroughly. So that is about my journey with the caregiving of cancer patients. Okay, so um, would you like to tell us like uh, how did your uh, caregiving journey began and uh, you know, uh, how did it all started? Yeah, sure. So my caregiving journey begins uh, when I was a student in my master degree when I was pursuing my medical biotechnology. At that time in uh, 2009, my grandmother suddenly got detected with a breast cancer. And she was though very tough. She went herself by own uh, to the doctor and then the uh, the news of having her uh, cancer got uh, broken up by herself only to whole family and she was she is very strong personality basically so after that uh, she got operated and then uh, four six eight months the chemotherapy and all went on and then uh, since she was detected with the terminal cancer so then the caregiving journey started because we had to shift her to the traditional therapy as well and then the side effects and everything got worse and that is how the journey to this started actually and what was the uh, the age of your grandmother when uh, she got diagnosed with cancer uh, she got diagnosed at uh, nearly 62 63 years of age i guess okay yeah and uh, when we last spoke you told me that you have to you know take break from your studies and uh, come back to yes. uh, take care of your yes. grandmother so uh, what was your age when you had to do that transition of uh, from becoming a student to a uh, caregiver yeah so at the time i was roughly 22 23 years old this we are talking about uh, uh, more than a decade ago she she uh, got expired in 2011. She got detected in 2009. At that time, I was studying into my bachelor's degree. So when I was in the final year of my master, she was at very terminal stage. And then along with the cancer, it had spread it to her whole chest. So she got a, a you know a very pathetic condition. She got all pus and everything. Whole chest got swelled up. So uh, when uh, she got admitted in the ICU first, but then again, there was no effect to it. And the doctors were suggesting that it is better to keep her at home because she'll be at home and in a homely environment. So, and again, she also didn't want to stay at hospital. She was not that kind. So we had a whole setup of ICU at her home. And for six, eight months, uh, for a whole semester, I had taken a break. Though I had all my submissions and all done during in between, only for that I went to my college because I was not studying at my hometown. Rest, I had stayed at home to take care of her. Okay. Uh, firstly, I would like to say that I'm very sorry for your loss, even though it has been quite a while, but, you know, the void of uh, losing grandparents can, you know, never, nothing can fill it up. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, really sorry for that. 
so uh, like you said that you had to leave your studies and you had to come back uh, you know to take care of your grandmother so were there any other any other responsibilities during this period that you had along with you know taking care of your grandmother no no i, I was i was continuing my study but then i had taken a, a break from it i was not going regularly to the college uh, other responsibilities was taken care of by my mother. The only thing I was uh, looking after full time was my grandmother. But though I was staying home, so there are other things also which need to be managed. And uh, apart from that, uh, nothing else. I was not working at that time. I was simply studying. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, how did you manage this entire entire transition, you know, from a student to a caregiver at such an early age? And, you know, and I know it becomes very difficult uh, to see that a person who has been, you know, self-independent for quite a long time, suddenly she yes. is dependent on you or your mother, you know, for every little things. Uh, so, how did you manage yeah. to go through that stress? The and, prime and, reason... Yeah. Uh, the prime reason was that uh, she we could not keep it uh, her at the hospital. She doesn't like it at all. And then there was no point also giving her unnecessary suffering because staying so long in the ICU was of no point. So we had all oxygen and multi-parameters and everything set up at our home. But then we uh, uh, there was two options. One was I, I took care of her, which she was very keen because she was very fond of me. Basically, I am the first child of my family. So she wanted me to be with her. And second option was to have some uh, paramedic person who can take care of her. But then we didn't want it that. So the first choice we took, I, I stayed with her. And then again, what we feel again is since I was also in the same field. So it is, of course, better to uh, use my knowledge first for my granny itself and to help her out to have at least a peaceful death because we know that ultimately she'll demise but it, uh, what I we believe in our family is that quality of life and of course quality of death also matter we didn't wanted her to suffer alone at hospital so on the day of her death also she was very cheering and all that so she had all the fun she had come and on the day of her death also so we wanted to give her a happy life and day. That's why we choose that. Yeah. And uh, what were the challenges, you know, that you had to go through or you had to face when uh, you were doing your caregiving? Uh, the journey? toughest challenge was to see her suffer very first thing. And at the second thing is to be tough at the same time because we knew what is the outcome so even though she shouts from the pain even though she sometimes feel that remove all this thing we had a bypass for her so we of course know that it is hurting her but then we could not help it out she has to take that intermittent bypass then again she is completely bedridden so we knew it is hurting her but then we need to be tough and even sometimes we need to be tough with her as well. That no, we are not going to listen it. You have to do this. You have to take this medicine. So that was the toughest, toughest part. You know, though we didn't want it to hurt her. We didn't want it to make her feel bad. But we have to do that for her good self only. That was the tough part, I feel. So did did you ever have this you know feeling of you know um feeling guilty that you know you have to uh, make yes. your grandma go through this even it's yes for she cries goal. yes yes it it gives a very bad guilt bad guilt you know a self guilt which we could not control but then we don't have any option because it is for her ultimate her good only she has to take pills she has to take that intermittent bypass she has to stay on bed we know it is hurting her but then we could not help uh, so uh, where uh, where you and uh, your mom uh, able to ask or find help in others and uh, you know uh, was it difficult to ask for help from other family uh, you know family members or friends no, it was fine with us. Like we have a good family support. We have a good background. 
so uh, we can get the help of it but then we didn't want it as such because we don't want uh, to disturb other people as well i have my two younger sisters too so we had managed by our own but then there are people who are regularly visiting so that i my daddy had lots of friends as well so they come cheer her up they talk she chatters around with everyone so we can okay and uh, while you were taking care of your grandmother uh, how did you manage to take care of yourself and your well being because obviously all these things would have taken a toll on you as well so how did you do that how did you manage your well being uh, uh my well being was actually very disturbed at that time but then again uh, my parents uh, took care of me very well though they are also affected but then they give me a uh, solace that okay happens thing like this so that is how there is nothing other thing which i did uh, beyond that but then thanks to their counseling their boost we we had passed through that bad phase okay and uh, would you like to share you know some uh, joyful move, moments of your caregiving experience with your grandmother yes sure uh, we knew the fact we knew the truth that this is what happened she was the first who had come to know so we had not kept hidden that she got cancer we had told everyone that she is suffering from cancer so when she had started with chemotherapy her her hair started to shed off so the first thing which she did is she had a long hair so she had straight forward cut it by her own itself and then we had called the saloon uh, man at home and we had her good hair style set up and that is how we had made fun of that moment of losing her hair and we had also tried every way that every moment we cherish so we had kept memory of everything even though we have memories of her on the bipap as well so we had tried that it is a joyful kind of a environment and then keeping all this thing in the mind we had learned the lesson as well so um, we are also since we have seen her losing the hair and everything so we are doing a hair donation by our own so i had did twice and my both younger sister had did one so we are donating her hair for the benefit of cancer patients uh so i would also uh, you know like uh, you to tell our viewers what did you learn from the entire experience because you know there is with whatever experience we have there's always a take away from it and like you know a point that you said that because of that particular incident uh, you and your family members have started with the uh, donating your hair so any other takeaways or any experience uh, of yours that you know and what did you learn uh, from your entire journey uh seeing my grandmother suffer uh, uh, you can see from my profile itself so now i am more of like my whole career get shifted more of towards oncology itself so that was the first big shift since i had to choose my direction i was doing my master so it was all totally got shifted into oncology field itself so that was the first thing which happened post her suffering second thing is i, I see the things more empathetically after i had seen her and after her experience so whenever i see anyone suffer or being suffering from any things not even cancer so we can think about that with the perspective of more empathy and the third thing which got majorly changes we had started living because we never knew how much time we have and we never knew what happens next so we live cheerfully and happily after that so we don't stress out much so all of us become a happy go lucky type of a people and we cherish everything that is what a key learning we got and um, yeah so priya like if uh, so if you want to you know give out a message or you know something from your experience or learning to a person 
who is about to go through the same thing, you know, like you started becoming a caregiver at a very early age. Like you said, you had to pause your, you know, your education and from a student, you became a caregiver. So if uh, someone out there is, you know, going through the same experience, uh, something that you would like to share with them. Yeah, so uh, I like to share is that uh, first of uh, first of all, the thing uh, is already happened. So you have to accept that, be it on you or be it on your family members. So very first thing is the acceptance. We cannot cry out that why this happens to me or why this is happening to my family or my family. It is happened. So we have to accept it wholeheartedly. And then second thing is we are anyways going to face it happily or sadly or by any means so i suggest it uh, that it is better to face it happily we knew that we have a limited time now with that particular member so it is good to pass that time happily by making the memories by having a cheerful uh, way uh, passing through that time and then of course the, the person is anyways going so better to bid a good farewell, a good bye. That is what I wanted to give a message. Though it is very tough, but then it is better to face it happily. That is what I feel. Uh, it is actually very nice to see that you're, you know, you after going through so much, you're so full of positivity. So uh, have you always been, you know, this positive, uh, like throughout or maybe this experience, uh, you know, made you more positive and, uh, towards everything or you have been like this? Uh, more of I'm being like this only because I feel there is always a redirection. Uh, that is what I am. And this attitude is all been developed by my grandmother itself. So she feels that everything happens for a reason. There is nothing good or bad. It is always a redirection. And though uh, it seems bad at the times, but when you uh, see a due course of time in a long duration, it will definitely turn out to be good. Because more than our plan, there is someone there sitting, a mastermind, who is planning more well for us and who see more uh, uh, good way rather than we think about us. So. It is better to be this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I I also have a few questions for you from, you know, the uh, health uh, care perspective yeah. because uh, you are a healthcare professional. So we would like to, uh, you know, uh, uh, know something about uh, that. Like we would ask something about that as well. So uh, yeah. what you, you know, think uh, that, you know, how are the... Uh, professional caregivers are impacted uh, through this caregiving journey because say they have to be a caregiver at work and there are times when they have to go back home and have the same role right so how I do feel you it is a that, tough you know, job I feel it is a tough job because uh, see uh, in our case I am a selective caregiver for one person only who is my family member of course but if you talk about the caregivers they're professionally working for it. Though it is by their choice, but then again, they are day in and day out seeing the trauma of the people. They are seeing, you know, uh, the uh, the feelings of the people that how they are suffering. So I, I feel uh, they are much affected by that. So they need to be very strong and, uh, you know, very empathetic, more than even me, I feel. It is a very tough and a noble job. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how how do you think that this burden and stress affect uh, the efficiency of a healthcare practitioner? Uh, it will definitely affect because you are every day seeing this, though it is a part of your profession, though you, you can be practical, you can accept the fact, but ultimately we are all humans, we get affected by the things. So I feel uh, they they also feel the trauma of the same. They also feel the helplessness because they want to do good of their patients. But then at certain moment of time, at certain point, you are helpless. You cannot do anything. So that that self guilt, that helplessness, I guess, is, uh, might affect the people more, and it might lead to uh, the outrage in forms of the depression or the 
चेंज इन मूड और इवन लूजिंग इंटरेस्ट इन फ्यू ऑफ द थिंग्स एट सर्टेन मोमेंट ऑफ टाइम yeah and uh, i would also uh, want to know priya like uh, you know many a times like there the uh, you know healthcare professionals well being are at you know at risk because they mostly they don't get time for themselves so yes. uh, how you think you know that uh, the the policies or you know uh, how uh, like what else they can do to keep themselves or their well being better See on the policies, I am not the right person to comment. I can say, but then, uh, of course, talking about that well-being, I feel that the uh, there should be a time out they could have in their visa schedule because they have a very tight schedule, and then it is also on the emergency basis as well because we never knew that when the emergency come in. So I feel there should be a good work-life balance, and there should be some me time as well. where they can refresh and up where they can cheer up and then they can get rid of this all negative thoughts or you can say the negative energy or the vibes which they are getting day in and day out so maybe a music or good cycling or a walk or going to some serene place a small small things might help out or a uh, outing with family and friends so because they also need to get refresh and up they also need to you know recharge themselves then and then only they can get a uh, give a good service to their patients so it is very important to have that balance okay so uh, what what is your me time <clears throat> what do you do uh, to keep your you know well being because you have been a caregiver you are also a healthcare professional so you know how do you balance my your... me time is uh, a good book uh, a good soothing music i i have pets as well so i play with them i i love uh, going to the serene places i find so less there so i can sit at some uh, beautiful green place or in the bank of the river and i can sit there for a long duration of time silently so that is my me time i like that. so uh, anything else priya that you want to you know share with your viewers about your experience your uh, journey no this was the major part of my caregiver journey which i had already shared and i am trying to uh, give uh, at least a little part back to the society which i had seen through so i had a complete shift of focus towards that same field my doctoral degree was also on the same breast cancer so trying to be you know sharing a drop in the benefit of a society that's it okay okay uh, thank you so much priya for uh, you know sharing uh, your journey with uh, caregiver sathi and i am sure there would be uh, many caregivers uh, who are you know first time caregivers who would find this very helpful and useful and uh, thank you so much uh, for coming to uh as and sharing your story thank you so much for having me here and giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts thank you so much